So last time we talked about real numbers and their properties, and I want to continue talking about real numbers and this time going over the properties of negatives and the effect negatives have on real numbers. So let's start off by going over the properties of negatives. So the first property I wanted to talk about was or is negative one times a. So if we multiply a times negative one, we just get a negative a. So for example, if we take negative one and multiply it by five, we just get a negative five. Okay. The second property I wanted to talk about is negative negative a. So if we have the negative of a negative a, we're just going to get a. And a is any real number. So a negative times a negative, and I guess we can write these rules out. If we have a negative multiplied by a negative, we're going to get a positive. And if we have a positive multiplied by a negative, we're going to get a negative and vice versa since multiplication is commutative. We're going to get a negative. And of course, if we have a positive multiplied by a positive, we're going to get a positive. So if we have negative times a negative a, we can look at that negative like it's a negative one, like up here, if that helps you. So if we have negative one times negative one, it's just a positive one and one times a is just a. So here, if we had negative of negative five, we just have five, okay? So the third property is if we have negative a times b, this is the same thing as saying a times negative b, which is just the negative of a times b. So we can move this negative around when we're just use, when we're multiplying. This negative can be moved around and really we can just pull it to the front. Okay? Now it's going to change if, if this were addition or subtraction, that's that's not the case. But here we can we can move this negative around and it's the same thing. So negative a times b is the same as a times negative b, or we can just pull it out to the front, multiply a and b, and then negate it. Okay? So here we're saying negative five times three is the same thing as saying five times negative three or negative five times three. This is like a negative one. You know, one is the identity, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute, but one is the identity. So it doesn't matter if we can look at this like a negative one because one could be multiplied by a number without changing its value and the negative can just be moved around, okay? All right, so the fourth property is negative a times negative b is the same thing as a times b. And once again, it's because this when we're multiplying, it doesn't matter what order we multiply because like we saw in the last video, multiplication is commutative so and associative. So A, we can multiply A times this negative times the B, then times this negative. But if you want to look at it like negative times negative is a positive and then A times B. So we just get positive AB, okay? All right, so the fifth property is going to be, we're going to talk about addition now. So if, if we have a negative of a plus b, we are going to look at this like it's a negative one and distribute it out. Remember last time we talked about the distributive property? Well, this negative is going to mul be multiplied by the a and by the b. So we're going to have a negative a because a negative one times a is just negative a. And then we have a positive b here. So a negative times a positive is a negative. So negative a minus b is what we get here. Okay. And it's going to change. This wouldn't be the same if it were subtraction. So let's look at it if it were subtraction. So we have a negative times a minus b. So the same thing, we're going to distribute this negative out. So a 
times a negative is negative a. And here we have, an, already we have a negative b, or a minus b times a negative. And remember we said negative times a negative is a positive. So here we have a positive b. So see how that changed, okay? So let's look at a couple examples. Let's look at the algebraic expression negative x plus 2. If you're, you know, trying to manipulate this in a problem, it might be easier if you went ahead and distributed this negative. So let's use first, we can see this would use property 5 because we have a negative times an expression with a positive. So negative a plus b is negative a minus b. So we have a negative x because negative times an x is negative x. And then a negative times a positive 2 is just going to be negative 2. So we have negative x minus 2. All right, let's look at one that's a little more complicated. We have a negative of the expression x plus y minus z. So First, we're going to use property 5 like we did before. Let's just distribute this negative out. So we have a negative x, a negative y because negative times a positive is a negative. So we have a negative y. And then we have a minus is already there, a negative z. Okay, and here we have property 2, which said a minus a minus a is just a. So minus a minus is just a plus. So this is going to be negative x minus y plus z. Okay. Now I mentioned before that a negative, this negative number can be looked at like we're multiplying by negative one because 1 has no effect on multiplication. It doesn't change. Like if we multiplied 1 by x, we're going to get x. Well, that's actually a very special property of 1 in real numbers because 1 is the mul multiplicative identity. So 1 is actually special because it's 1 is the multiplicative identity, meaning you can multiply 1 by any real number and it won't change the value of that real number. So 1 times a is the same thing as a times 1. And it's just going to give you a. So it doesn't change the value of your real number. So that makes it the multiplicative identity. And Getting that idea down, what does it mean to be an identity, meaning you and multiplicative, we're talking about multiplication. So if we were talking about additive identity, we would say the additive identity is one, is zero. I'm sorry, is zero because zero is the additive identity. Why? Because when we add zero to any real number, zero plus a, or a plus zero, we still are left with a because when you add zero to any number, it's just that number. So go ahead and try to cement the idea of what is an identity. An identity means whatever operation you're working with, when you perform that operation with the identity, it doesn't change the number you, you were working with. So one times a is just a, or zero plus a is just a. So that kind of will lead us into, well, what is an inverse? Well, an inverse is of a. So if we have a, the inverse is whatever we can, the multiplicative inverse, whatever we can multiply a by to get the identity, which is one. We said one is the multiplicative identity. So the inverse is gonna be whatever we can multiply a by to get back to the multiplicative identity. And here we can see that's 1 over a because a times 1 divided by a is just 1. 
because these a's cancel because a over a is just one itself and one times one is one. So that will kind of lead us into talking about fractions, which we're going to talk about in the next video. We're going to talk about the properties of fractions and um, how we can undo multiplication or undo division with the other operation.